If you understand the concept of correlation as being an association between two variables and how it should not be confused with causation, it's now time to learn how to calculate Pearson's R, also known as the correlation coefficient. And that's what this video will focus on, how to calculate Pearson's R correlation coefficient. And once you've calculated Pearson's R, it's just one more simple step to calculate Pearson's R squared, or the coefficient of determination. For our example, we will test the hypothesis that the number of hours a student studies for a final exam is positively related to the score they will receive on that exam. And you'll remember that Pearson's R is used when you are testing to see if there is a relationship between two continuous level variables, which is what we have here, number of hours studying and score on the exam. You can calculate a mean on both of these variables. To determine if a relationship exists between hours of study and exam score, you would calculate Pearson's R because it measures the linear relationship between two continuous level variables. They could be gathering interval or ratio level data. For the information to plug into the formula, you need to have all the scores in the data set, and that means two sets of scores for each case. With this, you can calculate the mean of both continuous level variables, which would be X and Y. And you'll also need the total number of observations so you can calculate degrees of freedom. You will need to establish your alpha level, which is usually 0.05. And you'll need to determine if your hypothesis necessitates a one-tailed or a two-tailed test. You'll recall that a one-tailed test is when we hypothesize that the difference between the two scores is directional. And a two-tailed test is when we are merely testing to see if there is a difference, or in this case, a correlation without specifying which direction the correlation will be. It is non-directional. For our example, we are hypothesizing that there is a positive correlation between hours of study and exam scores. So we would be using a one-tailed test. And of course, you'll need a table of critical R values so that you can compare your calculated R with the critical R to determine whether you should accept or reject the null hypothesis. To determine if a relationship exists between hours of study and exam score, you would calculate Pearson's R because it measures the linear relationship between two continuous level variables. They could be gathering interval or ratio level data. That takes us to the formula for Pearson's R. Notice that you really only need to know the scores for each group and the means for each group. And degrees of freedom, which you need to look up the critical R value on a table to determine if your findings are indeed significant, is the number of observations minus 2. Back to our hypothesis that there is a correlation between the number of hours spent studying for an exam and the resulting score on the final examination. You gather data from seven students on the hours they study, which we will call the X variable, and their exam scores, or the Y variable. So the N for each variable is 7. In total, however, you have 14 observations, 7 for the x variable and 7 for the y variable. And you'll need to know this to calculate degrees of freedom. You can calculate the mean for each set of numbers. So for hours studied, 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 plus 3 plus 1 plus 6 equals 28. Divided by 7, which is the n for the x variable, is 4. Do the same thing for exam scores, the y variable, and you'll come up with 60 as the mean. So the mean of x is 4, and the mean of y is 60. So now we have all we need to start doing our calculations. Look at the numerator of the formula, the sum of each score in the group minus the group mean. You do this for the scores on the x variable, number of hours, and the y variable, score on the exam. So starting with x, 2 minus the mean of x, which is 4, equals negative 2. Then 4 minus the mean of x, 4, equals 0. Continue doing this for all the scores in the x group. And then do the same for y. 58 minus the mean of y, which is 60, equals negative 2. Then 32 minus the mean of y, 60, equals negative 28, and so on. The formula tells us to multiply these two scores together. So you have negative 2 times negative 2, or 4. Then 0 times negative 28 is 0, and then so on. Sigma tells us to add all of these products together, which is 142. That means that 142 is what goes into the numerator of this formula. Now on to the denominator, which tells you to square the result of each score minus the group mean. Go back to this column. Negative 2 squared is 4. 0 squared is 0, and the rest of the x scores. Sigma again tells you to add all of these numbers together, and we will get 28.
You do the same for the y scores. Negative 2 squared is 4, negative 28 squared is 784, and so on. Add them all together and you get 1864. Now you have all of the data for the denominator. Now it's time to finish off the formula. Just a review of the formula and what we've calculated already. First, we have the sum of each score on the x variable minus the mean of the x group multiplied by the sum of each group on the y variable minus the y variable's group mean, so 142. You've calculated the sum of each score minus the mean squared for each of the two variables, x and y. Plugging that into the equation is 142 divided by the product of the square roots of 28 and 1864, which is 5.29 times 43.17, or 226.46. Reducing that down becomes 142 divided by 228.46, and finally that tells you that r equals 0.62. What this tells you is that as 0.62 is close to the positive 1.0, it appears to be a very strong positive correlation. It appears then that the number of hours spent studying for an exam is positively correlated or connected to the exam score. But now we have to take the next step to compare our calculated R of 0.62 to determine whether we should accept or reject the null hypothesis. And for that, we'll need our critical value table for Pearson's R. First, we need to calculate degrees of freedom, which is n minus 2. Remember that we had seven sets of scores, seven scores on the x variable and seven on the y variable, for a total of 14 scores. 14 minus 2 equals 12 degrees of freedom. And you'll recall that degrees of freedom refers to how many ways our data could be combined and still produce the same value for a statistic. Assuming an alpha level of 0.05 for a one-tailed test, meaning that we're only willing to accept a 5% chance of error, we want to be 95% confident, we can look for critical R. Find where 12 degrees of freedom intersect with a one-tailed test at 0.05, and that's 0.457, our critical R value. Remember that if our calculated statistic is equal to or higher than the critical value, you would reject the null hypothesis, while if it is less than the critical value, you would accept the null hypothesis. In this case, 0.62 is greater than the 0.457 critical value, meaning that we reject the null in favor of the alternative hypothesis. We would conclude then that we are 95% sure that the number of hours studying for an exam does, in fact, positively correlated with scores on the exam. Now, we talked earlier about R squared, which is Pearson's R squared. And this refers to what percent of the independent variable x, or in this case the number of hours studying, explains what happens to the dependent variable, y, or score on the exam. And in this case it looks like this positive correlation explains about 38% of the variation. Remember that the closer r squared is to 1, the better x explains y. Processing time. What do you need to calculate to plug into the Pearson's R formula? Really, all you need is the raw data, or the actual scores, for each variable so that you can calculate the means for the x and y variables. And once you do this, if you can add, subtract, multiply, divide, square, and do a square root, you can calculate the r value. What does an r squared of 0.79 mean? Remember that r squared is looking to estimate the percentage of the independent variable that explains what happened to the dependent variable in a linear model. And an r-squared of 0 indicates that the model explains none of the variability, or 0% of the variability, of the response data around its mean. While an r-squared of 1 means that the model explains all, or 100% of the variability, of the response data around its mean. So an r-squared of 0.79 means that about 79% of the variation can be explained, which is a pretty high percentage. So if we calculated an r-square of 0.79 for our hypothesis that hours of studying is positively correlated with exam scores, well then you should probably get started logging those study hours so that you can ace your next exam.